The mid-infrared beamline consists of the Bruker Vertex 70V spectrometer, connected to a Hyperion 3000 FTIR microscope. This beamline uses infrared synchrotron radiation, which is delivered to the Hodge through a series of mirrors inside an evacuated pipe. This beamline features an active optics feedback system to stabilize the beam, which was developed by the infrared beamline at the Advanced Light Source, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Inside the spectrometer, the light passes through the compact Bruker rock solid interferometer, which generates interfered light to illuminate the sample, which is necessary to perform Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. You may be familiar with the original Michelson interferometer. It is a simple optical system used to create interfered light at certain wavelengths. The interferometer consists of five essential components. The IR light source, the beam splitter, two mirrors, one fixed and one that can be moved, and a detector. When light enters the interferometer from the source, it hits the beam splitter, transmitting half its energy and reflecting the other half. The transmitted and reflected beams reflect off the two mirrors, recombine at the beam splitter, and are sent to the detector. The moving mirror slides back and forth, causing one of the beams to take a slightly longer path before recombining. This creates interference. Suppose a coherent beam of light of one wavelength were directed into the interferometer. Before the mirror moved, the paths taken by the beams would be equal in length, and the light would interfere constructively. As the mirror moves, the two components move in and out of phase in proportion to the mirror position, and this creates constructive and destructive interference. The result is an interferogram, a plot comparing the intensity of the light at the detector as a function of the distance in path length taken by the two beam components. For a single wavelength, this looks like a sinusoid whose wavelength is equal to the wavelength of the light being interfered. Taking the Fourier transform of this wave, we measure one spike at the wave number associated with the incident light. Suppose we mix in a second color of light with the first. Now the interferogram is the sum of the two sine waves. Each component moves in and out of phase at a rate unique to that wavelength of light, as the mirror must move a different distance to cancel out light of a different wavelength. Taking the Fourier transform again, we observe another spike in addition to the first, located at the new wave number. This tells us that the interferogram is made from two discrete wavelengths. Now suppose we deliver a bit of every wavelength into the interferometer. The interferogram is now a function composed of many different sinusoids of different frequencies, all added together. At the center of the graph is the zero path difference point, which should always contain the maximum value of the interferogram, as all wavelengths will constructively interfere when the two components travel the same distance, hence zero difference. The essence of Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy is that we can find the relative intensities of each wavelength by taking the Fourier transform of this whole interferogram. The Bruker rock solid interferometer does not have one moving mirror. It actually has two cube corner mirrors which sit on a rocking laver. The cube corner shape is able to reflect light in exactly the same direction as the incident beam regardless of the mirror orientation, mitigating alignment problems encountered by the original interferometer. The concept of operation is the same, however. Light enters as a common beam and gets separated by the beam splitter, reflected off mirrors, and recombined. We can cause interference on each frequency of light by adjusting the length of each optical path. The infrared light is directed from the spectrometer into the microscope and through the sample. During absorption spectroscopy, certain wavelengths will be attenuated, creating a slightly different spectrum. By dividing the sample spectrum by the reference spectrum, we can obtain a transmittance spectrum, which shows which wave numbers of light are attenuated and transmitted through the sample. This information can also be represented as an absorbance spectrum, in which case the peaks indicate absorbed light and identify features in the sample. On a given sample, the microscope can perform this measurement on a material pixel by pixel, generating a map of the sample containing spectral information. The Hyperion 3000 is also equipped with a 64 by 64 pixel focal plane array detector, which allows 4096 spectra to be measured concurrently. 
This technology allows users to quickly collect data over large areas, 